and for the support of the glorious cause. I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there is no man better Sir, suited to the task. To really? The that I can no think of several. Consideration could have Charles Lee. To have this arduous employment do I know you? I would not expect happiness. you to remember. <laughs> I Come, Connor, there's someone I want you to meet. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. I'm sorry to pull you away Those like that, I doubt but not they the will last discharge. thing we need is that the is two of you coming to blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor. Tell me you have news of Pitcairn. I'm told he's taken shelter in Boston, where he's guarded by a thousand redcoats. The only way you're gonna get at him is if we draw him out. And lucky for you, we're launching an offensive against the city in order to do just that. Israel Putnam has been given command of our forces. Present this to him and he'll provide whatever aid you require. You'll find him at the encampment on Bunker Hill. You have my thanks. No need. It's the least I could do. Pitcairn's a dangerous man. The sooner we're rid of him, the better. I would say the same of Charles Lee. Now that's an altogether different beast. Let us leave it for another day. Best you head to Boston, Connor. Well, the woods we find here are very good. Some are too strong, though, as well as the flavor of the meat wood. I've tried everything to keep the little buggers out of my garden. But the Still here, are you? I was just wondering, what happens now? There's quite a lot to do. Commander Washington must determine when and where we'll strike next. And we need to get to work on our message. Message? We must contact the broadsheets at once. Ensure it's clear to everyone that it was the Loyalists who fired first in Lexington. But no one knows who fired first. Which is exactly why we must spread the news quickly. We'll determine public opinion. This seems dishonest. Perhaps, but so what? People must believe we acted in self-defense, else we've committed treason. But you have. Better to bow and scrape before a tyrant, then? Is that what you suggest? No, of course not. No one should be denied freedom. And yet, to change the truth, it seems a dangerous road to travel. Understand, Connor. This is a war fought not just on the battlefield, but within hearts and minds as well. There's nothing wrong with a bit of theater, especially if it saves lives. I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. This is not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's brief. There's been some 
disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Red Coast rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Up ahead. You can't miss. I don't care much for your excuses, Stephanie. You should be building on Bunker Hill. Breeze is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery. Our orders came from men so divorced from the situation, we are compelled by reason to employ our own strategies to make a public determination. More than I can understand even half that nonsense. What's not to understand? I'm trying to ensure our victory! What would you know about victory? I killed the sea wolf in her den, armed with only a knife! I escaped the Kanawaga Indians who sought to burn me alive! And I was the sole survivor of a shipwreck during the Battle of Havana! So you will excuse me if I choose... Bunker Hill! Good morning, gentlemen! General Putnam. What? I'm looking for John Pitt. I was told you would be able to help me find him. He's stuck away inside that city with no reason to be. As long as that ship continues, it's assault. We'll never flush him out. But if the ship was silent... Well, that poor John might be forced to get off his arse and come forward. I shall fly this flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral.
They have better numbers, you say. Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear. And neither should you. For what they have in material, they lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion. We believe. So maintain vigilance. Serve your ammo. Ensure a proper line of sight. And above all else, men, do not fire until you see the white of their eyes. I'll be dead. You did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what of Pitcairn? He's left Boston. As I said, he would. He set up camp on Molten Hill. It's no good way to get out of it. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit. They will wait for us to thin their ranks. There is no time. I will have to chance a direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not to get your mads of March here, son. I expect an apology on my return.
Why? Why did you do this? To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve. You meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss. To explain. If you've put an into that now. If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do not think we ask the same question of the British. These things take time. And I would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. For better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. But we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now because of that. Så har ju jag nere med att tänka om det sett att gå. Det är ju när jag har tänkt att om det sett att gå. Up on me like that. Why don't you just go out there and just help this cap retreat? Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it! General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> But it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington.